it was just his his range is insane. He can do what you walk in the Storch's house. I remember I had this I had this sample, right? Hold on, I just went dark. I had this sample and it wasn't getting cleared and I was like, Well shit, I gotta replay it. I was like, Let me go to Storch's, right? I go to Storch and I'm like, yo, you think you could replay this? No lie, ten minutes, he has ten instruments replayed. Like wow. it out like insane this someone like that is always going to win that's what i told him when i first met him i was like bro you'll always be here and you'll always win because great music is what lasts and it's not a matter of uh if it's gonna last or if it's gonna work it's really just a win and that's you know that's kind of what i always believe of myself was that um it wasn't like damn i wonder if this is gonna work i wonder if this is gonna blow up i just believed i had great music and i was like you can't ignore great music for too yeah. long you know, the also something interesting thing about with snow globe it's like you always like the whole journey of you is showing how self-contained you are, unprecedented that, you know, yeah. you're, the, you're the artist, the producer, you're the engineer. And then now you open yourself up to collaborating with legendary producers like him and also Boy Wonder. And it's like the results also work that way, too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think the Guess What thing with Rick Ross, that's like one of my favorite joints of the year. Like, what is what, what was it like to give up that level of control and then still get the results that you want? You know... Man, I had this crazy epiphany the other night because I was like, I realized that I've always realized that the reason why I wasn't working with other people was because I didn't know other people. <laughs> like, everyone's always like, why, you know, why didn't you fuck with anyone else? Why don't you fuck with anyone else? It's like, because I didn't know anyone else. Y'all just think that once <laughs> people just think like once you get on, like you have Drake's number, like he just comes with like, your... <laughs> he went, do the song with J. Cole already. It's like, it's not a button that you push and like a verse pops out. <laughs> uh, I didn't know anyone. I still don't know a lot of people, but the people I've been fortunate enough to connect with, like Wanda and Ill Mind and Rick Ross and Ty and all these sorts of just legends, it's like, I was always down to work with them. I just didn't have the, the connect. And so it's it's been really dope though to see like, man, even when I don't, because I know my fans really, despite what the world says, my fans love, I, I, I have a feeling majority of my fan base probably would prefer me to produce everything, no features, mixed mm -hmm. by me. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I always still give that, you know? Yeah. And I always give that. Because, number one, I love that, too. And number two, I know that that's what my fan that's where I'm from. But it's cool to know that, man, if I want to, I can go over here and play y'all's game and beat y'all at that, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I went over here and got a beat from Boy Wonder, a feature with a relatively uh, unknown artist, Bia, mm -hmm. and mixed by Jason Joshua, not by me. Mm. And I went on that radio. So it's mm. like, what do y'all, like, what can y'all tell me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can get a plaque doing it all by myself. Or, if, yeah, give me a beat by someone else, mixed by someone else with a feature. I'm going to still get a plaque. Like, I, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, <laughs> guess guess what? Like it was dope too. I don't know if you guys performed it, but you shot the video together. Like it just looked like a lot of fun too. Like like yes. I know I know what a comedian Ross is. Like it seemed like in that car scene, you was definitely like laughing a lot. Like what was it like shooting a video? With oh, bro. Ross? So, <laughs> this is a hilarious story. Um, so Ross is just like to me one of the illest rappers. Like I don't know if Ross has ever given a bad verse ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially on a feature. Yeah. Uh, but, so we're shooting the video and like we're running a bit, you know, over. And so that car scene was the last scene before Ross had to get out of there. So we only really had uh, like one go at it or like two takes or yeah, something. Yeah. And so I had been, we had all been drinking, whatever. And so, <laughs> but then towards the end of the night, we started smoking, right? Because the scene before the car scene was the poker scene where we're smoking blunts and shit. And so now I'm a little high. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like all of it starts to hit me that I'm sitting in the back of a Rolls Royce with a fur on with Rick Ross. And I'm like, this is the most ridiculous shit I've ever <laughs> I'm like, this is and so, like, while we're filming this shit and he's rapping, I'm like, my reaction in that video is the oh, of a fan sitting next to Rick Ross, and he's rapping on 
his song. Like, yeah. I, I remember being like, fuck, I wish I could do the take again so I could look cooler. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> the, the duality, right? Where you are probably more self-sufficient than 90% of these artists, right? Because you own your catalog. So you're always going to make money, right? You always got your tune court thing. So right. you're in a good place. There is security with your, which what you do. But sure. at the same time, you lose like everybody else because you had a tour plan. You like to touch international lands with your moms and shit. Like, talk yeah. about how Russ has, like, processed this crazy change that happened in March. And I, I, what's it been like for you personally? Um, yeah, it was disappointing that, you know, we obviously had to stop the tour um, and cancel it. Uh, but I, I don't know. I just, I mean, to be honest, I'm not even trying to come off, like, insensitive but i'm not hurting like a lot of artists are hurting just because like a lot of these artists depend on other people for money they depend on you know doing four club things a week for 40k bags each so there's your 160k a week and now you're lit or you know you're doing these one-offs in random parts of the country and or, or the world or you're doing these tours um but i don't know i always like my tour because i always made so much money off my music and selling my music. I never even looked at tours like how a lot of artists look at them, where it's mm -hmm. like, I'm finally making money. Like when I do international tours, I don't even really make money like that because I spend all the money on taking and taking my friends and doing seven star travels around. Turn them into vacations. Yeah, I've seen it. You always turn it into vacations. Right, where it's like it's vacationing with the side of shows instead of shows, and maybe you step out of your hotel once to see something. You know, because I'm like, shit, if we're already all over here around the world, like we're in New Zealand, we might as well get on a yacht, go to a winery, go to, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm not, I'm okay. And I was like, you know what? Even even though the tour was obviously going to bring in millions of dollars, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to make up for it, though, with my other business, which is my TuneCore. So I'm going to just flood, you know? It's like TuneCore is such a... Owning, not even just TuneCore, but owning your cat catalog is a is a volume game. Meaning, like, okay, let's say let's say you're making ten dollars a month because you got one song up on your TuneCore. If you just put up three more songs, you'll make more than ten dollars a month, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. You feel me? So there is no ceiling except for the one you put on yourself when it comes to owning your catalog and the income you can generate. So I'm like, shit. All right, if I lost out on a couple million dollars. I'm going to just flood on my tune core and make up for it and then then some because yeah. or once I once I put out a song and I own it I make money on that till beyond my death <laughs> you feel me a tour you make money on it right then and there in those 2 months and that's it uh -huh. and then no more so sure. catalog is just owning your music is the only way to longevity wealth owning your music is is your own pension plan but yeah. a lot of people understand that but they call so them in, this, in the case of this, we put out a deluxe record, like Col people that don't know clear, Columbia is really distributing your music at the end of the day. You still own the content. Right, right. Yeah, now, um, you know, yeah. So it was a partnership with Columbia, and it was a beautiful situation, you know. It's a beautiful situation. But I've always maintained my independence. I'm fully independent. Um, so, you know, it's great. Today's a good day because it's Friday, and you said that's a day when uh, two core pays, like the mailbox money day, right? So, congratulations <laughs> for today. Friday's a good day, right? Friday's uh, always good, right? It's Fridays now. It's Friday and Saturdays because they have so much uh, traffic. Probably thanks to me that uh, it's it's <laughs> out on Saturdays. <laughs> it Friday, but then Saturdays you wake up. Yeah. You know, and it's funny. I know a lot of people are like. A lot of people, I feel like, misunderstand my message of I'm not trying to shit on y'all. I'm not trying to uh, say, ha-ha, fuck you. Y'all don't got it like me. It's more so like I don't understand why y'all don't do this. I'm trying. I'm giving y'all the game. As, as easy as I try and, like, give y'all a blueprint, I could be on some real vulture shit. Yeah. And make money via hip-hop, right? Make money via black culture keep it all to myself and not even give you all the tools. To me, that's fucking crazy. Yo. 
Y'all can all do this. Every artist right now can sign up on TuneCore like I did in 2011 or sign up on whatever, you know, platform you choose to choose to use and own your music and put it out. There's like, I, every artist I always talk to, when I get to have a conversation with them, I'm always like, bro, get a TuneCore. Like, you know, artists, unfortunately, are still living check to check because you got to think, right? You get an advance per album. So... So you get your advance, right? Let's say you get a million dollars per album. Your million off rip is 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 not a million. It's like three hundred fifty k because you because it's it's people are paying the managers twenty percent, a lawyer five percent, and a business manager five percent. So that's thirty percent, right? So thirty percent of a million is three hundred k. So you're at seven hundred k, and then you got to cut that in half for taxes. So you got three hundred fifty k net. That's before you buy shit. You only have three hundred fifty k to spend. And so you, so your 350k that you netted off of your album advance is now what you have to spend. Your next advance comes, or the tour comes, mm -hmm. as opposed to weekly getting a check for your music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some of these artists are getting annual checks, one check, and having to make it stretch. Yeah. And if or and fucked up shit like this happens, now what? Yeah, and you said it like they call it mailbox money, right? And that's why I know how much love and respect you have for Nip. Like, yeah, mailbox money is important. <laughs> Nipsey's just the goat for that, you know. Like the game and gems that Nipsey left behind is is the reason why I feel like his impact is just one of the biggest that hip hop has ever seen. Just because the mindset he left behind, the marathon and the mailbox money and the ownership, it's amazing, man. It's amazing. I want to talk about one of the serious songs, though, that, like, that No Tears Left. I seem like that March was a tough month for your mother. She lost her father. Your grandfather lost her dog. Like, all these personal matters. Like, talk about making that record No Tears Left and why that was important to include. Um, yeah. I had never worked with Murder Beats before. And so, uh, you know, we just went back and forth and it was like, yeah, let's do something. And so he sent me some beats and... uh that one was just, yeah, that one was important to make. I think I made that uh, a week after all that had happened. You know, she lost her she lost her dad and her baby, like her puppy, her dog, within six days of each other, seven days of each other. So, you know, it was rough. And then we're also quarantined, so she can't even, like, get out and take her mind off of things. You got to just sit and wallow in your own misery. So, um that was important because I, I can't, like, I can't keep shit bottled up, you know? Like, I got to get it out. Otherwise, I'm going to go fucking insane and I'm going to, like, I'm going to just burst, you know? So that was just a therapy session. I, I, I call a lot of my studio sessions therapy sessions because um, it's my audio diary. It's like I'm talking to the mic. The mic is the therapist, you know? So... Oh, you important. stay creative. I mean, even from Jump Man, when the quarantine hit, you, you uh, I guess the record that ended up becoming Sky, you said you was on like swing on a swing with your guitar. Yeah. You, Yo, so, you know what happened? I had been watching a lot of like 70s rock documentaries. So like, uh, <laughs> like Laurel Canyon documentaries and shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, uh, The Birds and Beach Boys and Jim Morrison stuff and just, you know, all sorts of crazy shit. And I was like, man, these people would just sit around with a guitar and that's it and write some of the greatest songs ever. And they were always songs that, you know, captured the current times. Mm. I was like, man, I'm hearing all this music coming out during quarantine that's got nothing to do with shit. Y'all are out here dropping club songs. Like, are y'all, can y'all read the room? Can y'all read the room at all? Like, y'all are dropping club songs during quarantine. What do you want me to do with this? I can't turn up. <laughs> I'm out of touch. I've seen so many artists try and drop like turn up clubs. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, are you even here with us? Or are you just <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, that's even why I got off social media for a little bit because I found myself being on social media too much because of quarantine because there's mm -hmm. nothing else on your phone. And I was just like, man, I don't want to fall into the trap of just posting to post and I was like, I'm here for music. Like, I just want to be about music. And I saw so many artists doing everything but dropping music. I'm like, bro, I don't give a fuck about any of this shit you're talking about. Drop a song or a video and shut the fuck up. I don't care about all this. <laughs> other 
know what no, I'm saying? I think it's interesting too. When he saw the new songs, you show your range of your musical ear and your interest. Where you like one song, you like interpolating fucking Fall Out Boy, and then yes. the other song, you cleared a, a Maxwell sample, right? Yes. But <laughs> Sample came down to the wire. <laughs> I was like, so, <laughs> "We're Maxwell, right?" Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think I had I had that song for a while, but um, so you know, going through the sample clearing process, usually it's pretty like it's pretty cut and dry. We have an agent who, a clearance agent who hits the people up. They send back a quote. You go back and forth, and then you clear it. Um, with Maxwell, and this has nothing to do with Maxwell, but it was more so just um, we couldn't get a hold of his team. That went, I don't know, just the people that can have to do with that, and they weren't hitting us back. And I was like, well, wait a second. I was like, man, I remember texting Maxwell like three years ago. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, let me let me just throw out a text. I'm sure. His... <laughs> but I was like, let me throw out a text. I'm sure his numbers changed, but fuck yeah. it. It literally came down to the last day. I was like, I need this song on here because it was the raps. It was the like soul sample raps and it was my production. And I was like, bro, I need this. Like, I need this on here. Um, and so I texted him and he instantly hits me back and I posted the message where he said, you know, all love, gonna clear right now. Love your sound. You sound like hip hop. I'm a fan. Did it. I was like, fucking incredible. And then it got cleared like instantly. So you sound, you sound like hip hop is a great compliment because, you know. Oh, the greatest shit I've ever been told is that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's like, I feel like at the end of the day, um, being a white person in hip hop, uh, which is a, which is a, despite of what 12 year olds try and say, hip hop was created by black people for black people. That's the reality. That's the reality. That's the reality. And now, because of its beautiful, accepting nature, other ethnicities and whatever have been welcomed in and been able to put their own spin on it and do their own thing. The problem I think that hip hop and the culture has is when you're not from it, meaning you're not black and you come in and you muddy it and you fuck it up and you disrespect its roots and the sounds of it. So someone like Maxwell telling me that I sound like hip hop is, I don't, I don't know a bigger compliment than that, yeah. you know? So Absolutely. the reaction been crazy, man. So did you know you know you was gonna go back and do a deluxe? See, like, what's the strategy with artists with the deluxe version I know. thing? It's some just stupid new shit. <laughs> Everyone and the, and the thing about the deluxe is now it's like your whole sequence can change now. Like it's just it's deluxe record mania, deluxe album it's mania. Pure consumption based. You know what I'm saying? Like let's just call it what it is. It's pure consumption based. You know, yeah. people are dropping deluxe albums. You know to, it, I mean, they're dropping sometimes 20 new songs, 10 new songs, whole new albums, like yeah. whole new albums. <laughs> just so that basically you can get two albums that count as one. Mm. Shout out to Nav. Nav, Nav finessed the system. I, I'm like, I don't have any problem with that. You can't hate the player, you gotta hate the game. Yeah. So it's like, it's like he finessed the system because it's like he dropped two albums and it counted as one. Mm. You can't be mad at that though. Like that's in the rules. <laughs> like that's yeah. in the rules. You feel me? He dropped his album and then he dropped another one that was like fifteen songs or something, called it the deluxe, and then the sales went up like four a or something. You know what I'm saying? The because like seventy, then it goes to one twenty. I fuck with that. That's like I respect that. You're playing the game with that. You know what I'm saying? What's no, you just put let put free AM on top of that motherfucker. My album, free AM right there on top. Ooh. I know I know how shit goes off of my SoundCloud approach. The <laughs> first song on the album gets the most plays. All right. So when I'm dropping the deluxe, what song you think I'm about to put number one? The hit. <laughs> hit. The hit. 3 a.m. I know how it goes. I'm not slow. <laughs> I've been before we, here. Before, before we get out of here, I know you got a big announcement I, coming. I'm out of here. It's 2.30. I said 3 p.m. Oh, you want to go? Okay, let's go. Uh, Elliot, you know what I do? Come on. <laughs> It might kick us off, man. It's Instagram, man. It's crazy. Nah, uh, no, no. Um Yeah. And then uh Kalani. 
I just interviewed her. That James Blake joint she got, Grieving. All right. I didn't, I didn't even understand your tweet with that. Can you explain what you think of Kalani's Grieving? <laughs> yeah. Well, that tweet was a lot of tequila. Um, Wait, well, I got to hear. You want me to read it to you? Where is it? Do I have it? Please All do. I know is that Grieving by Kalani is one of the greatest, most miserably beautiful, emotional, slow motion train wrecks while ballerinas are dancing around debris songs I've ever heard. Absolutely. That's spot on. <laughs> spot on. Shout out Kalani. <laughs> That's spot on. Yeah, so Kalani had um, texted me, I feel like a month ago, a month and a half ago. She was like, I want to send you my album. I want you to listen to it. Oh, dope. And, yeah, and tell me what you think. I was like, what? Come on, run it, you know? So she sent it, and I listened to it in the studio. And I, like, my favorite song when I heard it at first was Everybody's Business. Um, and Grieving was up there, too. It was like Everybody's Business and Can I. Grieving was one of them, too. But then, like, when it came out and I went and listened to it again, I was like, grieving is the craziest shit ever. And, yes, that tweet is um, is super accurate because <laughs> <laughs> if, you listen, if you listen to grieving, right, if you listen to Grieving by Kehlani, it sounds like it's so emotional. It's so emotional and it's so sad. Yeah. But the music is done so well and it's delivered so well it's beautiful so that's where the miserably beautiful thing comes from and grieving is a train wreck you know <laughs> yeah. it's a fucking emotional train wreck so it's a train wreck and then it's all very slow so that's the slow motion part and then ballerina is dancing around debris i think <laughs> of finding beauty in the madness shout out to the weekend <laughs> There's my. Then, what, you, what did you think of uh, Drake? I mean, Tussie Slide. I guess he got a lot of backlash when that first came out. Like, what did you think of uh, the whole project, the demo tapes, Dark Lane? Um, I think I think Drake is just like Drake is just playing with people at this point, <laughs> <laughs> right? It just doesn't. Is if I'm Drake, I'm having a fucking ball of a time in my yeah. life. It's just yeah. like it doesn't matter. It's Drake. You feel me? Like, yeah. you, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You could put out whatever, and it's just like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to go get, like, a number one at Billboard just because, like, I love Tootsie Slide. Tootsie Slide, the melodies were crazy. And then when you actually listen to what he's talking about, it's like, wow, he made this content have a dance and be a TikTok song. But if you really listen to the content, it's kind of, like, violent. <laughs> <It's> yeah, like, <laughs> oh, this is... It's like a country grandma. <laughs> I, I I think TikTok might have yeah exactly. I think TikTok might have um, silly the the kind of genius behind the song for people as far as the perception like oh it's a TikTok song it's a tick. It's like nah if you just listen to the song it's also kind of like wild that he juxtaposed those sweet melodies with like somewhat violent content and made it kind of insane, you know. And Jay Electronica, like the last, the last thing I got to kind of hang out with people and socialize was uh, a listener for Jay Electronica, and, and Jay was there. The Jays were there, and like the Big Sean was there and stuff. And like, I just was amazed, like that this guy they really did it. Like they really, like Jay Z finally really got a project out of this guy, and they fucking did it. And it's just such a like really like this like to me, it's kind of just dark and like mixtapey in a vibe. But you know what I mean, like dense and just and real sharp with it. It's just different, and it was just like, you know. Amazing that this is finally gonna happen. Like, what what was your connection to the album when you heard it? Next one is that I think some I think people like Jay Electronica are super important and um, vital to like the ecosystem of hip hop because. Just have club songs, uh, da -da -da -da, mindless music. I gotta have Jay Electronica. Otherwise, it's just what are we? What is this culture turning into? You know, mm -hmm. so I just respect the fact that someone like that is relevant. <laughs> just like, and I feel like if you're a fan of hip hop, then there should be just the utmost respect for that type of music still being able to be relevant when it drops, so even if you're not listening to it a month later, two months later. The fact that it's relevant enough to make waves when it drops. That's, that's, you know how important that is? Yeah. So, 
because even for the up and coming artists, like not every artist is the. I just want to turn up and rap about Patex. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Some people are like, "Damn, well, I, you know, I see myself in Jay Electronica more than this person." So you know, it's dope. It, it's inspiring. It's inspiring. You know, it's inspiring. Yeah. It's great. I think it's great. And Jay Z had crazy verses on there. That was damn near a duo album. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so you caught the one. You, oh, you caught the one we said uh, empir empirical facts. That one with the uh, yeah. Who's your, who's your favorite now? Of what? No, that song we, uh, when Jay quotes the empirical oh. facts line. That one on there. I think you had tweeted about that one. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm gonna get in trouble. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Why? What happened, bro? What happened, man? Nah, I mean, I, look, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of everyone and everything. And I think Jay Z is one of the like. I think. I think. Put it like this, right? I think if you are trying to get into hip hop and Jay Z is not your blueprint for the how to manual, then I don't know who is. Yeah. I don't know who is. Like, he doesn't even have to be in your top five of your. You're life. not saying this because it's on title. <laughs> on title. Huh? I Eight more streams on title, so I am saying that because we're on title. <laughs> nah, but for real, it's like if if you're trying to get into hip hop and you're trying to you know come through this vessel, Jay Z is the epitome of like how far you can take hip hop music. Yeah, he's a billionaire. You understand that? It's like he's a billionaire. So the shit that always perplexed me, right? And to this day, it still perplexes me is the amount of rappers infatuated with getting money who don't model themselves after Jay-Z. Mm. I, I would never understand that. It's like, okay, if we're all under this kind of like unspoken agreement that we all love getting money in hip hop, the person who gets the most money is Jay-Z. <laughs> so I'm not modeling your shit after him. Why are you modeling it after him? Who are fucking, you know, one millionaires? Well, I don't I think that, my theory is always that the younger generation, like, they don't necessarily want longevity. They want the big score. I think a lot of artists would like to come in the game, like, they, like the first run you had with the Wolf, the your SoundCloud success up to Wolf, that mm -hmm. could be someone's career, and it's perfect, and they don't catch an L. Like, I think they get scared of catching L's too, or having oh. ups and downs. Or there's yeah. times when you think Eminem's better than me or you think Nas is better than me. Like, they don't want to go through those ups and downs of it. Like, they want to they have that great three-year run yeah. and then move on to some other shit and, and get their bags. You know, I a lot of them. That'd be the goal. And I think, it's, I think it's clear when greatness isn't the goal. Like, I think it's clear when an NBA player doesn't care about getting a ring, they just care that they got to the league. And they're like, well, shit, whatever. I'm in the league. I'm getting a couple million a year, and I'm cool with that. And then there's Kobe Bryant and there's Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I just always, you know, it's, it's a matter of what you relate to. It's, it's, yeah. it's relate to and who resonates with you. But I never related to mediocrity. I never related to players who weren't trying to be great or people who weren't trying to be great. I related to, I related to greatness, you know, cause that's what I want for myself. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, make your bed and lay in it. But 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 don't model your career after people who only stuck around for two years and then be yelling on Instagram about how you need more. <laughs> like, like, bro, like you modeled yourself after the eleventh player on the bench. <laughs> you feel like, well, shit. At least I'm in the league, so you're lit. But it's like you're the eleventh player on the bench, bro. Like I I don't even get it. Like. Why are you angry about that? That's what you modeled your career after. Like, I know I'm going to go down as one of the greats because I refuse to accept anything else. And I'm down to put in the work and stick around for as long as I possibly can until it happens. See, a lot of people get rich and stop trying. And, and, and I think that I get it. You know, JP said it in an interview uh, with Breakfast Club how uh, the game is full of a lot of rappers who aren't rappers. The second hip hop became a get money scheme, you saw a lot of just people who wanted to get money start to rap, mm. even if they weren't that great of greatest rappers or whatever. They even could just if, get one, yeah. 
even if they didn't care about the music like that, they were like, well, shit, I could probably make a couple million off of it. So then you get those type of people. But my whole thing is like, damn, bro, if your scheme was to get money, the the most money comes with being great. Like, it's I, that's the shit that doesn't make sense to me. Like, if your goal in hip hop is to make the most amount of money, there is no way around it. You have to be great at making music. Like, look at the people who have the most money. Look at the ones on the Forbes list every time. Drake's, Jay-Z's, Cole's, Kendrick's. All have it, catalog. All have catalog. You have to have catalog. Look, all are, you know, objectively great, have been deemed great. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not these fucking bottom feeders and shit. <laughs> you know? I don't understand. I just, I never understood that. I'm like, okay, I get it. If you just want to use hip-hop to make money, I get it, but why wouldn't you want to make the most money then? And why wouldn't you want to model yourself after the person who makes the most money? It's yeah. like trying to make a league only because you want to make the most amount of money possible ever, but you don't want to be as great as Michael Jordan. It's like, well, then how do you think you're going to make the most amount of money? You think you're just going to be, you know, a fucking role player and yeah. get the amount of money ever? <laughs> So how do you how do you look at your strategy now? Like, did you sit there and really just reflect? Like, obviously, the the changes in the world. Now you're not touring. Now you're not doing this. It's like to decide to put this deluxe out. What does that lead to now? Like, what does the rest of 2020 look like ideally for us? I'm flooding. People can't fuck me when it comes to music. You know, that's that that's what it comes down to. Like, I'm I'm flooding with music. I'm here to just put out music and 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 make it clear that that's what I'm about. And my fans, you know, they've even been conditioned to accept an onslaught of music. I mean, when I was coming up, and even now, you know, I still see people say, like, oh, well, you're going to oversaturate if you put out too much music. It's like, that's just not how it works. It's not. <laughs> if, it's, if it's good, it doesn't matter. That's what they, if, it, if it's bad, yes, too much shit. Rapper. Who's your favorite rapper? Jay-Z. Okay. If Jay Z said I was putting out an album every month, you better complain. Only if it was bad, I'd want to protect him and say, "Hey, that's not good. Don't put that shit out." <laughs> if you put out twelve great albums every month, and you knew they were and they were going to be yeah, great. No, 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 I agree with you. Nobody turns down too much good shit. There's never enough good shit. And if you're a fan of something like Drake, is my favorite rapper. If Drake is like, "Yo, I'm about to go on a tear and put out a mixtape every month." I'm wildly excited as a fan. <laughs> now, if you don't, if you don't like Drake, or if you're not a fan, you're gonna be like, "Bro, you should chill." Like, it's not for you, bro. It's not for you. It's not for you. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, the rest of my 2020, I'm flooding with music. Like, and I'm just, I'm just trying to let people know. I'm. But you're going back to a record a week, or you're just gonna lead to an album? Like, do you have that I mapped out yet? Fuck around. I'm independent, so I'm gonna fuck around. Like I could do it. It's, I, I drop a song, you know, <laughs> tomorrow. I don't know. I'll fuck around. Not tomorrow. Relax. Everyone yeah. relax. <laughs> but um, no. Nah, I'm also I'm also here to rap. You know, and that's also what I'm trying to make it very clear with people. I'm here to rap as well. And so I got a I got a crazy little like four to five song thing I've been working on with with some like just pure rap. Hip hop head legends, Bitters. yeah, like oh, legend, legends. Okay, my bad. Yeah, nah, like even on the production side too. Okay, you know? so it's gonna and it's all bars, no melodies. Like it's all just it's it's gonna be special. I'm gonna send it to you when I get it. Okay, I got like I got most of it done, but man, it's gonna be special. But I'm just you know, I realize that at the end of the day. Now is the best time to to drop music. A lot of people are like, well, you know, we're quarantined, so people can't, you know, people are driving to my music less and people aren't at the clubs and whatever. It's like, bro, that's because y'all make activity music. Y'all make activity. <laughs> like, y'all only make music that works from midnight to 4 a.m. <laughs> it's like, how about, like, regular day shit? <laughs> you know what I'm that's how, back to what I was saying about just people dropping club songs during quarantine. It's like, what are we doing with this? This is not... The gyms are closed. <laughs> so we... <laughs> like, we, can't, we can't even use it there. It's just kind of like, bro, that's why I think I saw some style where it was like Frank Ocean streams are up and, and whatever. It's just, it's kind of like, 
that makes sense though because Frank Ocean makes music that you can enjoy in your house. Yeah. And those type of artists are always just, I'm telling you, the J. Coles, the Drakes, the Kendricks, there is a reason why they are who they are. You always said that, yep. Because you don't have to like, I can only listen to you between the hours of midnight and 4 a.m. and I must have three. <laughs> what type of fucking shit is that? Are you kidding? <laughs> tequila, tequila tunes. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's like, come on. What what is that? What is that? That's not <laughs> that's it's, not it's people it's people pursuing a hit. Everybody wants a hit. They want that feeling. Like your sonic integrity is on the line and it's so obvious. Like I feel like sonic integrity is so important when I, I integrity. Tell that you were that you were trying to do this. Like if you know, if I can yeah. tell that oh you just this is what you want from us, you want us to go turn up to this and do this to it just feels forced it's like bro just put out great music and 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 let the people speak and let them do what they do but a lot of people sonic <laughs> it, you know their sonic integrity is so pathetic because they're just like i don't give a fuck i'm gonna go get the beat from him the verse from him the hook from him y'all know what time i'm on y'all know what we're doing and it's just kind of like i guess bro but you look like a fucking vending machine like you just look like <laughs> oh man a vending machine. Yeah, where it's just like someone just presses a button like, I need a midnight to 4 a.m. song. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, bro. I, I just feel like music is getting so, music is getting so watered down and so, so not about the music anymore. It's, it, it's about, like you said, it's about chasing the hit and it's about, uh, you know, trying to curate something for this exact little moment. And I don't know, people are going to be like, well, you dropped, 3 a.m. and you just said you wanted to be a hit and you knew it was a hit at, you know, at the top of the shit, whatever. It's like, yeah, I made 3 a.m. as one of 12 songs I made that weekend with Best on Earth and, and songs with Snoop and all these other songs. That was just some, that was some natural shit. I was in the studio making natural shit. If you really listen, 3 a.m. is just Ride Slow Part 2. Which mm -hmm. is so, um, you know, I just... I encourage artists to not be scared to be authentic to themselves and be true to themselves and not worry about the numbers and, and all the other shit. If you, if you put out great music and it's true to you, it'll work. It'll work and you'll get a fan base. It's work for you, Russ, man. I appreciate it, man. Just the remote interview thing, you know, you haven't done any of these, I don't think, man. You've been on the low and I appreciate you coming no, to talk to me. No, this is my only one. This is my only one. <laughs> Always like such a great conversation with you. And I really appreciate your journalism and you're just your integrity, you know? And that's what I, w I was just, my mom is upstairs. So I was just telling my mom. <laughs> I was just telling my mom, like, yeah. Shout out to mom. Yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, now I'm doing an interview at two. And I was like, I, you know, I'm doing it because I can trust this person's integrity. They're not on yeah. fuck shit or whatever. A lot of interviewers, you know, they send emails to, to my manager or whatever, like, oh, we want to do an interview. And they wonder why we don't do the interviews with them. It's because we know y'all are going to ask stupid shit. <laughs> we know y'all are just here for, because, I mean, you know, right? As much as rappers are trying to chase a hit, a lot of journalists are trying to chase a headline. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hits. There, there's a difference between, you know, there's a difference between journalists who are trying to chase a headline and journalists who are trying to chase and curate a great story and a great conversation. Yeah. Same with who are trying to chase a hit and rappers who are trying to Great, a great story and a great uh, conversation with their fans and with the world. So I appreciate you. This is always great. I'm always down to talk, you know. Yes, I had to beg you to go on for 30 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Russ, man. Talk to you soon, homie. Love. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Big Russ, baby. Make sure you check out the deluxe version of that Snow Globe, man. I think 3M is about to be another smash. I play it, but I don't want to get in trouble, man. It's Elliot Wilson, Tyler Check It, man. Thank you guys for watching.